It is Tuesday morning. It is December the 2nd. Second day of hollow vlog. Um, I washed my hair. Didn't feel like drying it. So I just put on a ball cap. <laughs> Standard farm gal uniform when you don't want to fix your hair. Um, I've got to, I was supposed to meet Carol for lunch today and I'm not feeling very well today. I'm not sleeping good at night and I think I'm starting to get night sweats and hot flashes, which, you know, I'm 52 and it's time for menopause, I guess. Uh, yay. I'm sure that's what y'all wanted to know, right? <laughs> but I didn't sleep very well. So I decided to not, I'm just going to run to town and grab a few little groceries and uh, do some things here. Um, I've already fed the calf this morning. It drank about a third of a bottle and is eating some dry, some regular creep feed or feed. Uh, I mixed some of that calf manna in it to see if it would eat some of that. And it is eating it where it was when I left. Um, today, I'm going to try to work on my sewing. Uh, I've got a pair of dungarees about halfway through. It's a new pattern to me, so I'm testing them out with some fabric that my friend Chris gave me. Uh, I started the ribbing on my sweater last night on the, the bottom. Um, waistband, waist ribbing, I don't know, bottom ribbing, whatever. I still got to do the sleeves. Um, and then, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. And um, it's a beautiful day here. It's supposed to be pretty for the next couple of days. And we're supposed to get some rain over the weekend. So beautiful day today for hollow vlog day two. Oh, it's that time. It's time to make some dehydrated marshmallows. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, so I'm steeping my violet, dried violet leaves in some water for tea. I've got my uh, dehydrator going here with some marshmallows. So yes, dehydrated marshmallows. Even if you don't like marshmallows normally, I think dehydrated marshmallows are far superior because they're like little meringue cookies. And who doesn't love those, right? <laughs> well, I'm sure some people don't. But um, anyway, so uh, yeah, so I am uh, unpacking some groceries here. Um, I, of course, have chores to do, but I'm going to get my groceries unpacked and eat a bite of something and then um, go out and do chores. Okay, well, uh, I had some, I don't know, brunch, I guess you could call it because it's too late for breakfast and too early for lunch. But right now I'm sharpening my pocket knives because... You'll get cut quicker with the dull knife than you will a sharp one a lot of times because the dull knife, you'll be hacking away at something and it'll finally give way and cut the flitter out of you, <laughs> as my grandpa would say. So I thought I would share with you a little bit about uh, the stone I'm using. This is called Arkansas stone or navaculite. It's, um, it's sort of the standard for knife sharpening stones because it, and it's quarried here in Arkansas. Navaculite is a form of quartz, but the way it's compressed makes a very hard and dense stone. And um, it was formed or uplifted during part of the Ozark Orogeny, which is when the Ozark Mountains were formed. Um, so Navaculite is also what we used to uh, build our state capital out of. It's generally a gray or white stone. This one's got honing oil on it, so it looks a little bit funny. Um, but it's part of, uh, it's found in Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And um, it's sort of the standard for sharpening knives. Um, I try to keep my knives sharp in the winter time when I'm putting out hay. This is my main pocket knife. This is a, a buck pocket knife that one of my friends gave me as a gift one year. Um, I also have a couple of smaller uh, knives, but this is my main one. I use it to cut strings off my hay bales and for various other things. But um, they get dull the more you use them, and obviously, so you um, got to sharpen them. So, Navaculite is, um, as I said, it's a form of quartz, and it primarily is what's called a microcrystalline or a crypto crystalline rock and it's got silica or quartz in the form of chert or flint 
it's commonly white or gray or sometimes black. Um, it's also found in Japan and parts of the Middle East as well as here in Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And its name comes from um, novacula, which means sharp knife, dagger, or razor, which is a reference to its sharpening. Um, the Ozark um, geosyncline was formed during the, the oh, excuse me, the Washita geosyncline was formed during the uh, Oz the Washita orogeny, and that was during the um, the basin that forms that formed the Ozark Mountains. The top of the Ozark Mountains was formed during the Ordovician through the Mississippian periods, and then the uplift was during the Pennsylvanian. Um, probably there was a plate that came up from the south and pushed up the Ozark Mountains. They're some of the only east-west running mountains in the United States. In fact, I think they may be the only east-west running mountains in the United States. And that makes for some really interesting um, biodiversity. The north side is primarily covered um, with pines and the south side is primarily covered with hardwoods if you drive down through there. Um, but anyway, so use it as a sharpening tool. So um, Arkansas stone, you can buy pretty much at any uh, sharpening, as any sharpening tool or a place where you buy sharpening stones or wet rocks as my, my dad and grandpa used to call them. So um, this is actually one I bought for my dad and I've just kept it since then. So um, yeah, these knives have beveled blades on them so you have to kind of angle them as you sharpen them too is another thing you have to pay attention to. You have to use honing oil on this. This is not actually honing oil. Any oil will do. This is actually just vegetable oil. Um, but anyway, so I thought it was interesting. Now, there's some cool, interesting superstitions about knives. One of them is whoever opens the knife needs to be the one that closes it or it's bad luck. Also, you should never give knives as a gift, especially not as a wedding gift because they can cause strife in the marriage. That's one of the, the superstitions about knives. If somebody gives you a knife as a gift, you should give them a penny and then it's a purchase so it doesn't mess up your friendship. So when I, my friend gave me this knife, I gave him a dollar. <laughs> Uh, oh gosh, um, a drop knife um, on the ground will point in the direction the good luck is going to come from, supposedly, and um, you should never leave, there's a lot of superstitions about not stirring things with knives, not eating off your knives in a lot of different cultures, uh, but also they're protective, like you can put a knife in um, the lintel post of a house or in a near the door of a house and that's protective and also they're supposed to make um, childbirth easier. If you put a knife under the bed of a woman giving birth, it's supposed to make childbirth easier. And if you put a knife under your bed, it's supposed to drive away nightmares. So some interesting stuff about knives. So I've got my knives sharpened, so it's time to go out and do some uh, work. So might look up Navaculite, Arkansas stone. pretty day I would do a little bit of uh, general maintenance and part of that is checking the oil in my generator here. Uh, this is a Generac generator. Um, it's a I think 13 kilowatt generator which is the 
largest one you need unless you want to run 220 which 220 is typically what electrical heaters or electric air conditioners or um um dryers or electric stoves run on it's the it's um they require more voltage to work and so the um I didn't opt for that because it cost like several thousand dollars more. And plus, if the lights are out and we're having an ice storm, I'm probably not going to worry about running my dryer. Uh, my stove, my cook stove, and my uh, heating, part of my heating unit are um, gas. Now, this will run the electric ignition for my natural gas uh, stove and my natural gas um, HVAC unit. Um so one thing i need to do is check the oil you just periodically check it this is set up to run a duty cycle uh every saturday around noon it just kind of runs a self-check cycle for 10 minutes to keep the parts lubricated and such but it is a good idea to check the oil this particular brand takes 5w30 oil um so all you do is just like when you're checking in a car is you pull out the dipstick i've already wiped this one off i wiped it on my jeans no don't do that to your jeans only i should do that to my jeans these are old cruddy jeans anyway and then you check the dipstick this is still in the good zone so i don't need to add any oil the other thing that i want to do is check my propane tank the last time i checked it was about a month ago it was at over 50 percent which is good um, they don't like to come out for small deliveries, so they usually won't come out until it gets pretty low. So um, I haven't had to have a delivery in like two and a half years because I only use my generator. I only use it to power my generator and I have a 250 gallon tank. So I'm going to put this oil in here in the garage where I can find it when I need it next. And then um, the propane tank. Uh, has a gauge on the top of it. I rent this pro particular one uh, from the propane company. It has a gauge here on top of it, and you can see right now it's still at 50%. So I should be good for winter um, with that because um, the last time I had it filled was about three years ago, and it was at 75%. So unless we get struck with a really major storm um, which we could, I mean, we could, but I think I will be okay for the winter on that. It's always better to buy your propane and stuff in the summer because it's cheaper then. Um, right now it's not cheap at all. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so that's some basic farm maintenance you got to do. The other thing I've got to do is pull this tarp over the top of the calf's pen because we are due for some rain in a couple of days and I don't want her to get wet. So I'm going to take that tarp that's been flopping around in the wind and try to fix it. You're eating pretty good. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. You're eating that food, so that's good. You ate quite a bit of it. I gave you earlier, so that's good. Get you to clean that up. Maybe I'll give you some strength. Penny, did you get enough to eat earlier? You want some more? You want some more? Okay, y'all are loud. <laughs> I hear you too. All right, we'll give y'all a little bit more. You want to drink some more? Oh, I see what you're doing. You figured out how to hold it open with your key. There you go. Yeah, I'm trying to get up. All right, good girl. That's feeling better. That's feeling better. Good girl. She's a good girl. Yeah, here you go. Good girl. That's progress, I guess. I thought I'd share some holiday cards as I get them. Um, I'm terrible about sending them. I know, I know I need to do better, but I mean, well, but you know how that goes. <laughs> um, this one is from Michael and James. They are a couple up in Maine who adopted a dog named Pogo from me 
a few years ago. Unfortunately, Pogo has passed away from cancer, but we have been good friends. We both have, we both love sci-fi stuff. We both share a fondness for decorating for the holidays, although you couldn't tell it by the way I've acted the last couple of years. And also, uh, we love uranium glass. <laughs> so they sent me this sweet um, card here. They've adopted two new doggies from uh, shelters in Tennessee now. Um, and so they sent me a, a card and it's from Michael and James and Teddy and Boba. So, um, and, and there's a little picture on the inside of the card. So that's super sweet. They know I love that. <laughs> the next one is from Nancy and she does a beautiful job of fixing her cards up. She always puts a, a wax seal on the back of them and picks out the coolest stamps here. She's got the rabbit and the draft horses and stuff on there for me. And she sent this really super cute cat card. So that is really sweet. Let's see here. And it just says, Season's Greetings, Nancy. With her beautiful gold uh, ink that she's using. So she picks up the inks every year because she's really into uh, fountain pens. So super cute. I could see cutting that out and making it a little ornament. That's super cute little cat there. So mail hasn't come yet. It's kind of running late today, but that's all right. No mail means no bills, right? <laughs> Well, that's not true because I get everything online anymore. But anyway, so I'm going to uh, relax for a minute and eat a bite and then see if I can muster up this, the, <laughs> the will to go in there and work on those dungarees. Well, I'm in my sewing room and I decided to go ahead and open my presents. My 25 presents. Um, because I love my students and I love what I do. But every now and then you get one that's just kind of a stinker. And I've had one this semester. And I get really bothered when I get treated like that. Um, I take it personally. I'm not going to lie. I take it personally. Uh, but anyway, so I decided to open my presents before I worked on my sewing. So first is uh, Maria from Ninja Chicken's um, Herbal Hot Chocolate. And this one is called Winter Forest. So yummity yum, yum. She did a little card that told what the ingredients were on these. Um, I don't know where I have to, oh, there it is. Um, no, that's not it. Well, I'll have to find it and it'll tell what the ingredients are. And she sent this sweet little card. I think that's so sweet with a little mousy drink and this hot chocolate on there. Um, so when we get a week's worth opened, I'll let you know what the ingredients are in them. So this is Winter Forest. And then this is day two of um, the stitchy box. Oh, it's, yay, more stitchy hugs. Yay. <laughs> I love these. I love these. So let's see what these look like. Oh, how sweet. A little snowman. A little sweet snowman in there. How cool. Oh, and there's stickers. My other ones didn't have stickers on them, I guess. Oh, I guess because these are a lot dark. Let's see if there's any. Oh, there's a little slip in here. Let's see. Um, a package of fabulous custom floss tags for all your Christmas stitching. So it looks like there's 10 again. Look at how sweet he is. Oh my goodness. These are by Sarcy Girl, if I remember correctly. So I'm very excited. Yay. I, I feel like a grown up cross stitcher getting all these neat finagly things to work with here. So I'm going to work on my dungarees for a little while before I sign out for the night. Okay, so I have finished my heyday dungarees. This is a pattern by Waves and Wild. And it is... Uh, for a women's, I think it goes up to a 6X. I made the 2X and I made them longer. Now, one thing that I needed to do since I made them longer is I need to raise the back pocket just a little bit. They're a little bit lower than I would like. But overall, I'm really pleased with how these turned out. I made them out of some pass along fabric that my friend Chris gave me. Let's see if I can get and I lengthened them. I uh, dropped the waistline and I lengthened the length of the legs a little bit. Um, it, it was a struggle for my sewing machine to handle this stuff, especially when you got into like where you had these folded over tabs, you had to put the tabs in 
and then you had folded over so you had to for sew through four lengths of this fabric my sewing machine didn't like that at all <laughs> even though if i had i had a denim weight needle on there and it still didn't like it so um i had to be really careful about that and i did break a needle uh, while i was making these but they've got they've got an option for a button um top here or a tie and i thought the ties would be really super cute um probably a good option since my machine didn't like to sew through all those things well hello simon excuse me okay simon wants attention uh i've stripped the bed here to uh, wash my bed clothes so they're in the in the laundry still waiting on those to dry uh but yeah i'm pretty well <laughs> Simon just wants all kinds of attention here tonight. So I think that's where I'm going to call it um, a day. I'll put in a picture here of a full length shot of these. Uh, and I'm going to call it a day for this second day of Hollow Vlog. And I hope I'll see y'all tomorrow. I think I'm going to try to do a little science segment every day. Try to talk about something, a little sciencey thing. People seem to enjoy that. And there's going to be plenty of farm stuff, don't you worry. So, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.